All right, so we back with another um, reaction with deleted. What the fuck happening to Drake? Uh, I hope you guys enjoy though, and um, yeah. Drake over here posted up like a girl again. Get him. Knockers in his head and all. Get him. Nails done, hair done, everything did. I guess that was his inner girl anthem. I could tell that he pops his neck, smacks his lips. When he's over there gossiping to Chubbs, wait a minute. Imagine you looking like this, calling another grown man Chubbs. That's diabolical. It explains this pic right here. A bunch of thuggalicious men. The softest hip hop picture I've ever seen in my life. Why do they all look like they're about to cry? Boy, baby. That nigga said thug alicia uh, from the boondocks. <laughs> Homie over hoe. I feel like they're about to bust out and start singing. How do y'all expect me to take you seriously when your boss has eyeliner on? Y'all really gonna sit here and act like Drake won't cry and have venom nuts smeared down his face? And you want me to take this? I'm gonna be real with y'all. Before y'all sit here and be like, well, damn, everybody jumping on this. Uh, Kendrick, uh, Kendrick. Drake hate train type shit. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like at one point I did vibe to Drake and that was like in the early what 2012 I believe or some shit. Alright, so I really can't remember the exact date, but I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like when he like alright, like no cap, right? When he like the first song that I heard from Drake was what best I ever had and I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, I did not rock with that shit right away. It was just the fact that everybody kept playing that shit to the point where it's just like okay. I'm like, eh, kind of catchy now, you know, you feel me with the whoop, and then after that, I'm like, okay, so this must be the next big artist about to come out type shit, right, so I'm like, okay, let's, let's see what else he got, um, that was the only song I was rocking with at the time, and I, and honestly, with a lot of people that were listening to that shit on repeat, I did not, I did not listen to that shit on repeat, but, um, I, I remember there was one night, right? I'm chilling. Got school in the morning. I'm chilling, you know. Um, I'm on my phone or some shit. I think I was on YouTube, and it was like Drake dropped the... Uh, I think it was a... I think, yeah, Drake had dropped the music or whatever, right? And um, I really can't remember the name. I really... It was something about Kush Chrome. So it was something like that. And I was like, okay, so he's the lyricist. I right, bet, right? And I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be the new artist that I fuck with. That shit, da, da, da. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Once that nigga dropped the song with Rick Ross. And then, what was it? You better find your love. I was done with him. I ain't even going to lie. I stopped listening to Drake after that, bro. Like, the first song he made with Rick Ross. And then, it was another song where he looked like he was just in a foreign country. Like, I don't fucking know, but all I'm going to tell y'all is I sort of had been stopped listening to his song, so I ain't never really cared that much, but just to hear all this allegation shit come out, it just, to me, it's hella funny because it's like, damn, bro, you ain't all that everybody thought you was. This pick seriously, stop it. And I'm not going to lie, right? So with me, is if you it, it, like if you a certain kind of artist, right? Like, let's just say if you're a drill artist, you're a drill artist. If you're an R&B artist, you're an R&B artist. The shit that kept pissing me off with Drake, it was he was dibbing and dabbing in every fucking uh shit, Jamaican, American shit. Thank God he ain't trying to do no Haitian song. But I'm just saying, it was just like this nigga was just jumping from genre to genre to genre. And Lil Wayne probably did it, but Lil Wayne did it a little different where it was, it benefited him. Drake, I see why like I said, they was calling him the culture vulture. It is that Hello Kitty on your phone, bro? Why is Hello Kitty on your phone case? Everything had to be extra feminine, didn't it? For what? Even the phone did a hair flip. Yep, I'm bullying in the phone too. It's up for everybody. Ever since bro grew some inches in his hair, he wanted to be a part of the women. He used to sing to women, and now he became a real life female rapper. But for real though, what happened to Drake, man? Growing up, we used to mock his soft ass, his sensitive simp side. We used to all clown and say, hey, don't drink and Drake. You know, a spin to the same saying don't drink and drive but we changed the meaning to don't drink and text your ex or your women like drake would we made fun of his softness he had for women but we actually really enjoyed his music back then he had a way to express how we really felt after a heartbreak or how we feel when we want to pick up the phone and check on our old fling or maybe what it was like when we were rejected by the baddie we all want i'm not gonna lie i never felt like that about drake there was not a time where i can go to a drake song it depends how i feel about whatever I'm going through in life. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to throw on this drink. Hell no. Fuck no.
Shit, you got a better chance doing that shit with Rob Wave and that nigga right there. Listen, you get you in your feelings a little bit about life, but Drake. Drake never gave me that that kind of feeling where like I'm feeling down or if I'm going through something like I'm gonna just throw on this Drake song. Hell no. I got a couple artists that can fill that spot. On it, although Drake would be a little extra than most men with expressing his emotions to women, all of us men had a little Drake in us at some point in our lives. Hey, hey, pause, pause, pause. Not like that. What I'm saying is we all been there where we wanted to hit up an ex or maybe felt sad over that one baddie who got away. Yeah, we took jabs at Drake because it was a friendly sig fest or roast session, depending on where you're from. We we call it sigging from where I'm from. But anyway, Drake never been for real zesty zesty. He was always was just saw. So what happened? What what changed? I don't for real get pulled into this whole clone conspiracies about celebrities, but this is for real giving clone vibes. Bro doesn't even look like Drake anymore. Tilting his neck, poking his lips out like he's Zoolander. Bro, what are you doing for real? The Azimpic must also be a testosterone tranquilizer or something. Cause what in the actual fuck? What concerns me the most is that he continues to present himself as a gangster with a tough demeanor in his music. Yet his appearance resembles that of a teenage girl. Better yet a teenage stud named Mookie. It just doesn't go. Mitch matching ass because Snoop Dogg and Nipsey Hussle have both worn their hair just like this before. Even old school pimps wear their hair like this and sometimes they press it and style it. It's just how he presents it I guess. Hey Drake, don't you know what the duck lips even implies? And you sitting here popping the lips right out your face. Dude can write when he wants to. He's written songs for other people and made his own hits as well at one point of his career. He's written for the likes of Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Jamie Foxx, Kanye West, Rihanna, Rita Ora, and the list goes on. However, that didn't change the fact that he would then take the biggest L to Kendrick Lamar in the Civil War this year. But he stood on all 10 unlike J. Cole's scary ass. And I seen some of y'all saying in the comments that Drake didn't take his L like a man. Whether he was bitter about it and threw some jabs after, he still did take his L as a man because he accepted the challenge to begin with. He didn't run from a fade. People get their ass beat all the time in the real world and then go on to claim they won the fight when everyone knew they really got their ass dragged. It's no different. He took his L. It's like... <laughs> It's like a nigga getting his ass whooped, right? But he stay knocking out. Beep, beep, beep. That nigga, the nigga that's getting his ass whooped be the same nigga getting out. Like, well, you good? You good? Nigga, that is not your line. Your line, should, your line should be like, all right, nigga, I'm done. I'm done. Like, you got it. You got it. Not talking like, like you done Mayweather this motherfucker. Still. And I respect bruh for going to war in the first place. But man, I just don't get the newfound bitch in him. Drake, what's going on? Blink, my nigga, are you in trouble? I'm starting to think this might be some sort of humiliation ritual. Maybe because of his lifelong contract with Lucian Grange, for the power he now has of other people's music, was the exchange of his own manhood. Now, I'm not gonna say I believe this take, but shit, it's not something I wouldn't pass by him or anyone else. What are you willing to do for fame and for money, my nigga? I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna look like a Powerpuff girl. I can tell you that. I don't. Oh, Buttercup looking at him. Maybe this is his midlife crisis people talk about. He's trying to find himself before 40. Hey, do you, bruh. That's your business. You're rich as fuck. If you're bored, just say that then. Doing anything to make your life more exciting. I feel like I'm watching an episode of Sex in the City with Carrie Bradshaw's ass trying to uplift herself after a heartbreak. What's next for Drake, man? When is this new album coming? I know he has that new album with Party Next Door on the way. A lot of people are excited for that. I wonder what it will sound like. Rumor has it that it might drop on his birthday, October 24th. But there's also a rumor that the Boogeyman might also drop on October 24th. Everyone's saying that's how Kendrick's gonna keep trolling and keeping his foot on Drake's neck. He's gonna drop the album on his birthday. If he does that, that's so crazy. That's on some real villain shit. Real demon time shit. If Kendrick does some shit like that, that's gonna be funny as hell. I ain't gonna hold. Wait, hold up. I'm gonna get off topic real quick. If both Kendrick Lamar and Drake end up dropping new albums, which one are you listening to first? Kendrick's next album is 
crucial. It will show whose music captures the most attention and drives the highest sales, offering insight into who holds the audience's interest. Beyond numbers, this release will determine if Kendrick can maintain the momentum and position he's carved out in the industry. While he's already secured major victories this year, some speculate that he might not be able to keep his dominant spot. This album will be the real test of whether Kendrick has truly won over the audience for the long run. Yeah, he won the war, but did he secure the people? I'm gonna be honest, this is my take, and y'all might not agree, but Kendrick needs to come out like old Kendrick, Rigor Mortis, Mad City, Alright, Humble, Look Out for Detox, even the Range Brothers and Family Ties, or his albums like Damn and Good Kid, Mad City. And even though Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers was an album that needed to age to be appreciated, this album seems to have shifted the public's perception of Kendrick, casting him as a saint and creating expectations for him to always behave accordingly. However, his career has consistently centered around the internal struggle between righteousness and embracing darker, more complex aspects of his identity. He needs to remind the people who the fuck he is and what the hell he's about. People listen to Drake because people like the way he's... Let's be honest, who... What the fuck is he about? He's from Toronto, like... I learned there's a lot of gangsters from Toronto I'm not too familiar with, but... That's time I check, half of the gangsters are from either Cali, uh, Chicago, New York, Florida, Georgia, like... So on and so on, like, if you think about it... The gangsters are from the city that he literally went to go and still, like, basically went to go be a culture vulture in. Like, you feel me? Like, the man was from fucking the grassy. And I ain't never watched the fucking grassy. When this nigga came out, everybody was talking about the grassy. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? I guess I didn't have cable back then. In reality, I really didn't have cable back then. So, hey. Sounds instead of actually listening to the lyrics. And these same people call Kendrick's music boring because of his last project. Kendrick needs to find a balance that appeals to a broader audience. Even though Not Like Us was more of a parody song to shut the gobblers up when they were saying that he made boring tunes and he had to let them know I can I can make ass shaking music too and I'll still kill your savior. He would need to figure out how he could deliver the melodic elements that resonate with the Drake gobblers while also staying true to the style that his longtime fans have come to appreciate. It can't be all the way conscious though, not like Mr. Morrell or Section 80. Even if his core fans want this, it can't. It needs to have balance, like Overly Dedicated or The Damn Album. So this will be interesting. Don't forget Academics, Maul, Aiden Ross, all of them, they are all Drake meat munchers and are here to push a narrative against Kendrick for Drake because their fan base are easily manipulated. And I I honestly don't think they're on payroll. They're just male groupies. I feel like Drake puts a good word in for them to get these sponsorship deals, but that's where it stops. I wouldn't even give them that type of clout of actually being on payroll. They're never invited to Drake's outings or even his events, which lets me know they aren't a part of his team. They don't get free concert tickets. I don't never see him pull them on stage or takes pictures with these guys. And we all know how Drake is obsessed with his friends. They're just pawns for Drake. He He's using them. So the bot allegations will be in discussion again, obviously, but Kendrick's not gonna need the bots because everyone is waiting for this drop. I also peeped that Tyler, the creator, passed on the October 24th weekend date. Most albums are known to drop on a Friday. Tyler publicly announced he's coming out on the 28th, which would be a Monday, to let whoever know that wants to drop Thursday the 24th or Friday that it's open for them to get their sales in. I'ma be honest with you, I predict that KDOT will drop on the 24th or sometime that weekend. SZA even recently posted on her story about Kendrick dropping, as well as Schoolboy Q, and I'm pretty sure this will be the way Kendrick keeps trolling Drake. Or I could just be wrong and if so, fuck it, I thought that would be hilarious. Everyone is saying that this was a 20v1 battle, but was it? Yeah, Kendrick had all the rappers on his side, but Drake had the media and has had every big media streamer or rap commentator on his side spinning narratives and feeding the people the lies he wanted them to digest. Man, he even had fucking Uma Thurman asking bruh if he needed the Kill Bill outfit in Katana. The average white woman 
is going to see Uma fucking Thurman's co-sign and think Drake won the battle. It's easy brainwashing. Let's be for real. Was it really 20v1? Cause I would call the shit a 50-50 split. Nigga, you ain't Jim Jones. Take them damn volleys out your hair. You look silly. This nigga for real thinks he's giving pimp or sugar free or drew down when he's really Uzi Vert mixed with Cleo from Set It Off. Now fuck that. Actually, Cleo harder than that nigga. Cleo went down like a thug. He too soft to be Cleo. And J. I Cole was is TT scary not, ass running away. away. Don't want no smoke. But want to be recognized that he was mentioned. I do wonder what Drake's album was sound like hopefully he can redeem himself but i doubt it if he's still dressing like a teenage tomboy i have yet to see the man you need to evolve drake show some type of growth your music hasn't evolved this entire time mentally that is for you to excel at storytelling in real life situations back then about experiences with women you would think you would be able to do the same shit today but in a grown man's perspective instead of the same 20 year old mindset and then people wonder why he runs the numbers of streams because in a way this dude is smart people my age listen to his old shit for nostalgia and people that are teens listen to him today because they can relate to his teenage perspective he literally takes control of the airwaves being able to make songs to feed every age bracket but now he's slowly declining in numbers because after the civil war most of the adults that grew with drake's music moved on from his same old song so now he's finally seeing a slight decrease in numbers because because he's only feeding the youth and the Drake gobblers who haven't grown up yet mentally. Hey, those stickers on your phone aren't helping with the allegations either. This nigga making me want to keep Meet the Grams on repeat. I guess he's going on a date night with Top 5. I'm sure he gotta pay you back somehow for setting him free, right? Can you believe this is the guy J. Cole wrote his love letter to? What, what did Kendrick say? Y'all niggas kissing and hugging on stage? Yeah, that bar hit different. Drake done morphed into the brat, took her whole style bar for bar. And, and don't forget, this is supposed to be your guys' Toronto demon. You can't go by Drake no more, gang. You have to for real go by Aubrey now. You're Aubrey. Somebody said he looked like Penny Proud and I can't unsee it. I just keep thinking about how this is the pick he decided to post. You know damn well Drake took a hundred different picks with a hundred different poses and had his legs dangling on his bed, scrolling through that, trying to figure out which one's the best <laughs> one to post. Kendrick's diss tracks that were aimed at Drake continue to age impressively well over time. And to think other grown ass men ride for this dude. Like I'm serious, watch them go to war in my comments over this man. I'm starting to think y'all just as Zesty. Drake recently posted pictures on his Instagram story like the petty girl that he is and mocked Jay-Z by posting pics of Solange after the infamous elevator fight. And shortly after, an Aaliyah pic from her music video with DMX called Back in One Piece. I also like to point out DMX hated Drake as well. What about Drake? You like Drake? No. I don't like anything about Drake. I don't like his Drake's recent controversial posts are fueling the narratives that TikTok and YouTube's conspiracy theorists promote, essentially stirring the pot and falsely reinforcing claims to keep the spotlight on Jay-Z. I want to address those who don't necessarily buy into conspiracy theories. Just imagine a grown man leveraging these theories to take shots at his rivals. How bizarre and twisted could you for real get? And even if it was true, he's still moving sassy as fuck as if he doesn't have his own conspiracy allegations on trafficking women and children worry about your own shit he's mad at jay-z for giving the super bowl spot to kada he felt the shade and he's taking it hard i mean his team made up a whole lie about passing on the super bowl spot which the nfl confirmed that it was false and what the hell is with this happy dad shit we get it already damn y'all are a cult we understand whoever gobbles drink the hardest gets a sponsorship deal to keep them paid Get off y'all nuts already. I guess Drake is y'all daddy for real, and he's happy, huh? Speaking of happy dad, I'm so sick of this dude. Can you stop gobbling Drake, please? Holding that flyer is giving obsession. For those who don't know, this is the flyer they claim where K-Dot beat Whitney at. It was already confirmed the dates were mixed up. Kendrick performed on May 3rd, and Diddy May 26th, which would have been Memorial Weekend. It's obvious the woman that they seen bloodied in the hotel was Cassie, and it was obvious it was Diddy that beat on Cassie, and they got it mixed up with Whitney for whatever reason. What's even more crazy is that people really believe this narrative when there's a whole ass picture of the couple rock climbing with their friends and family the very next day when the so-called beating took place. If you don't take your ass back to your cave and keep counting niggas and songs, you a weirdo. 
with your bark ass. And also, why do you keep trying to shade Kendrick as the messiah of rap? Why are you acting like the messiahs who showed up to the Civil War? Because the boogeyman did. I don't, I'm not understanding. You keep calling him our messiah and our savior, but that's not who showed up. The boogeyman showed up, and he obliterated your girly pop over there. Hey, but besides all that, Drake is spiraling. He is literally transforming into a 15-year-old stud girl before our eyes. He looks like a grown lesbian woman, and I'm just concerned. Is he don't even look like Drake anymore, and I'm not sure what the hell is going on. I'm, I'm lost. He looks like he could be a clone, and I don't even believe in that shit. Shit, but hey, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised. They done clone Tyrone. But alright, man, I'm gonna catch on the next one. Hit that like, subscribe, follow your boy on Twitch. And, uh, one.